Hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to our webinar on AI scenarios in S4HANA and integrated business plan. In fact, this is the fourth webinar in a series of five. Uh, we've already had three, and there is one more coming up uh, next month. Before we start, maybe some general rules uh, during the session. Um, it is possible to ask questions. However, during the session, you are muted. Uh, if you have questions, you can ask them by clicking on the question mark in the, in the chat. And then we will come back to them uh, later on. Your uh, audio and video settings, please make sure that you use Google Chrome for the best performance. Um, the webinar will also be recorded and shared with you later on. And I, for the rest, I would say just uh, lay back, relax, and enjoy the session. For today, we are in fact with three speakers. Uh, my name is Eric. Next to me is uh, Nicolas, who will talk to you about AI and supply chain execution. And in the beautiful country of Spain, we have Salva, who is joining us and who will talk about uh, AI in uh, integrated business plan. The agenda for today, we will start with an introduction on, uh, let's say, AI and also how it's embedded inside uh, SAP solutions. Then we will look to um, embedded AI solutions in S4 and in IBP. Next to that, we will look at custom-built AI solutions. There is one more thing that Nicolas will, will mention. Um, we will come back to you then with a conclusion and um, we will then still have time to give the Q&A. So I hereby give the word to Salva. So please enjoy and talk to you later. OK, so welcome, everybody. First of all, let's start with a bit of the history of artificial intelligence, just in case you never heard about it. I think you would have. Uh, let's uh, first uh, set the scene. And we rewind back to 1956 which was a pivotal moment in the history of artificial intelligence, where the term artificial intelligence was first coined at the Dartmouth conference by the visionary John McCarthy. And then this term would become a driving force in shaping the future of technology and business, uh, as you all know. Uh, fast forwarding to 1966, we witnessed the birth of Eliza, the first chatbot uh, by Joseph Weissenbaum. This creation marked, again, a significant step towards human-computer interaction, and it's still a topic that uh, is very relevant today. In 1994, the year I was born, by the way, the landscape uh, shifted once again with the introduction of uh, NAFLA, and this was the pioneering self-driving bus at Carnegie Mellon University. Um, this innovation, as you know, paved the way again for the autonomous revolution we are experiencing today with um, AI algorithms that are guiding um, vehicles through complex environments. You all know about uh, Tesla and other uh, vehicles. Then uh, in 1997, we witnessed a historical moment again with IBM's Deep Blue, who defeated the chess champion Gary Kasparov, um, evidencing again the potential of artificial intelligence to surpass uh, human intelligence even. In uh, 2000, uh, this, this year brought a, a new era marked by the rise of uh, hyperscalers and cloud computing. And this laid the foundation for the exponential growth of uh, artificial intelligence capabilities because it enabled the process of large amounts of data and the application of machine learning to uh, AI systems. Even more recent, in 2022, uh, something that we all know, the, we were witness of the release of uh, ChatGPT, which has been a revolu revolutionary development, uh, bringing artificial, artificial intelligence to the broader audience, uh, to everybody to use. A lot of consultants and businesses are using this on their daily uh, activities. Um, so it has become um, a tool not just for experts, but also a companion for individuals across multiple fields. So here we are today at a crossroad of history and innovation where artificial intelligence is uh, integrating into supply chain. It promises efficiency, optimization, strategic decision making. Uh, but we need to be realistic about it also. And we need to learn to distinguish between what is hype and what is actually happening 
productive concepts. So this leads us to something that is very useful, like the Gardner hype cycle. Maybe you heard about it, um, but it is a graphical representation of the maturity and the adoption of technologies in various domains. And it's often used to uh, analyze uh, the phases of hype and expectations that surround emerging technologies, like it is the case of artificial intelligence. It is characterized by several phases and it provides insights into how likely uh, a technology is. For example, uh, it is likely to, to penetrate into the market, how it is adopted and what is the impact it will have uh, on technology over time. So here you see, for example, innovation trigger. This is when a technology uh, breakthrough is achieved. So everybody is super hyped about it. Uh, we have a peak of inflated expectations. So we expect a lot about artificial intelligence, but we don't really know uh, how much it will bring us in the future. This brings us to the trough of disillusionment. We realize, okay, artificial intelligence is a hype word. We all talk about it, but is it really going to uh, make any difference in our daily lives? And we progress into a slope of enlightenment where we actually start learning that artificial intelligence can be applied in our daily routines, in our processes, it can actually be useful. And the ideal situation for all uh, artificial intelligence technology would be that we are in a plateau of productivity. We are really incorporating artificial intelligence in our daily processes, and we really make good use uh, out of it. So let's have a look uh, more in depth at what really artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning is. First of all, just to make sure that we are all on the same page. So artificial intelligence is a broad field of computer science. It's focused on creating intelligent machines that are capable of uh, performing tasks that typically require human intelligence. Uh, that's the more broad definition. Machine learning, however, is a subset of that artificial intelligence, and it involves training algorithms on data to enable them to learn uh, from patterns, making predictions, and improving performance over time without having to explicitly program uh, in computer coding. Deep learning, however, is even a more specialized form of machine learning that uses uh, neural networks with multiple layers to model and to solve uh, complex tasks, mimicking a bit the human brain um, for more sophisticated and abstract uh, learning. Um, in summary, artificial intelligence, uh, it is the overall concept. Machine learning is a technique with, uh, within artificial intelligence and deep learning is an either even further subset of machine learning that emphasizes on deep neural networks. Let's now look deeper into the different types of machine learning and how they can be applied in supply chain, of course. So there are mainly three types of machine learning that uh, we know uh, to, up to date. One of them is supervised learning. Um, in supervised learning, the algorithm is trained on labeled data sets. So it learns to map input data to the corresponding output. It's a bit like having a teacher supervising a learning process with a student, providing the algorithm with the correct answers. Uh, on the other hand, we have unsupervised learning. So it's a bit opposite to supervised learning, where this type of learning uh, involves feeding the algorithm with unlabeled data. The system then has to find patterns and relationships within the data on its own without any uh, guidance. And it's a bit like if a detective would be exploring a crime scene without any information about what happened there. Finally, uh, we have reinforcement learning. Um, here, uh, the algorithm learns by interacting with the environment. Uh, it will receive feedback in the form of a reward or a, a penalty. And that will guide the system to better, better make a decision over time to get to improve. It's like a bit teaching a dog, for those who have dogs, uh, new tricks through a system of treats and corrections. Within those types of machine learning, uh, we can identify certain applications that can assist us already in supply chain. Uh, some of them might be familiar to you, like for example, customer segmentation, uh, real-time decision-taking, uh, exception handling, forecasting, predictions. But then the question is, how does SAP position artificial intelligence based on all of this, uh, and how does it help us? So let's have a look at the next slide. Indeed, um, when it comes to uh, supply chain uh, solutions specifically, um, or even uh, uh, involved in supply chain, we have three main pillars. We have uh, S4HANA uh, with 
the supply chain execution modules that most of you will, will know for sure. We have also sub IBP, which is more uh, dedicated to uh, planning, and we have sub business network for the collaboration. Artificial intelligence can be leveraged in multiple areas uh, and in multiple forms within SAP. Um, but to start off, we have the standard out of the box solutions, the embedded AI solutions. Uh, all three um, pillars mentioned uh, above contain embedded AI solutions to cover certain business scenarios. Uh, they are also backed up by SAP Analytics Cloud, SAC, which uh, will also incorporate extended planning and, and predictive analytic uh, capabilities. But maybe your business is, is very much into artificial intelligence and you are not happy or uh, you, are not, you don't have enough with the uh, out-of-the-box uh, solutions and you are willing to, to go beyond and, and deploy your own models. Uh, so SAP also allows to, uh, to do this thing in, in, in a custom build manner. Um, and this uh, is enabled today in, via the SAP AI Core platform uh, powered by SAP PTP. Uh, if you need further assistance with your custom build solutions, we can help you from FlexSocite because we have uh, also within the Kronos group a huge number of experts dedicated to uh, specific uh, artificial intelligence solutions. Of course, uh, it's not. Um, it is worth mentioning that SAP can also link to any solutions that you have already deployed in Azure uh, Machine Learning, in, in Google Cloud, in, in AWS. So for sure, this is the overall picture of uh, SAP when it comes to implementing artificial intelligence. But now let's go a bit deeper and let's have a look at uh, an example in S4HANA that already brings use to AI. So I give the word to Nicola. Yeah, thank you, Salah. Uh, so for this webinar, we try to showcase one particular example of embedded solutions in s and one with IBP. So I will briefly be highlighting first the embedded solution in s um, with a particular use case for the automation uh, of sales order processing. Right? Um, so when you create sales orders in s it can be a bit of a cumbersome task in the sense that you get information from your customer in a PDF file, a PO, an Excel file, different formats, something, sometimes uh, information is missing and that can lead to yeah, delays in order fulfillment and it can be a bit of a, a cumbersome task then to create your sales orders uh, manually in SAP. And so SAP came with a solution to act actually automate that process with AI where you can upload a PDF document or an Excel file into an application and SAP tries to extract the sales order data automatically from that PDF or from that Excel file and tries to create that sales order for you. Uh, it, it already makes a proposition. Kind of. uh, so that can save a lot of time to the sales department in, uh, in the sales order creation process. And the best thing about it is, like we said, it's an embedded solution. So uh, if you already have s hana and you follow recent updates, this application might already be available to you uh, and in essence, it should be a plug and play solution. We also have a short video on it to showcase what it looks like. So this is the app where you can actually um, upload a PDF file that you've received from your customer. Um, you can upload it. Then the system will scan the document, look for uh, data fields, which it recognizes and can use for sales order creation. And you can view the file you've uploaded, uh, verify it, uh, and actually create a sales order. Um, you can also enhance uh, the standard application with a BAPI, for example, to uh, add custom logic of your own. Um, and you can also add uh, robotic processing to actually um, allow the app to scan your, your Outlook to look for those PDF files and, and, and upload them to SAP. Um, I also want to stress here that, of course, it's an automation process, but it's it's an enabler. Uh, so it always needs a little bit of iteration and human intervention. Uh, so when you upload a file, uh, SAP will extract the data and do a proposition. Uh, but of course, it's always necessary for someone to verify that proposition, to make sure that all the details are correct. And if necessary, um, correct that proposition from SAP. So uh, 
uh, I really wanted to, to stress here that it, it always needs uh, human intervention to actually uh, yeah, correct what SAP proposes and extracts from uh, a PDF file. And next, we can uh, look at uh, an embedded solution in uh, IBP. And I give the word back to uh, Sol. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nicola. So indeed, um, now let's have a look at also an out-of-the-box solution within IBP uh, for discovering patterns in, in master data. This is typically a fundamental domain in all companies, master data, which is prone to many errors uh, and may lead to financial impact if the errors are introduced and we notice them too late. <clears throat> Uh, in here, machine learning can be used to discover patterns in master data by analyzing the large uh, data set of master data that you, that you provide uh, the models. And it can identify hidden relationships or trends with those um, master data um, elements. Uh, through algorithms and statistical techniques, uh, ML models can recognize those patterns, correlations, and anomalies, uh, and provide insights to, to the underlying st structure of the, of the characteristics of master data. Uh, this enables the organizations to, to gain deeper understanding of their data, to take informed decisions, to correct those cases, uh, uncover uh, insights, um, and that those insights might not be apparent, uh, so via traditional analytical methods. So SAP IVP can do this for us with an app, which is available out of the box. So let's have a look at the next slide. In this case, uh, we are showing or showcasing a particular um, screen from a particular master data type that we have selected in IBP. Um, we have chosen certain attributes to evaluate the relation that the machine learning model could find in between them. Uh, for example, in this case, we, have, we are looking at products and we are uh, looking at the relation that we could uh, identify combining location, planner ID, lot size, and procurement type. So giving this information to a machine learning model can uh, give us some insights and make us correct some data that we uh, are not aware that we have not uh, spotted uh, by ourselves. So let's have a look at the next slide where we will see how IBP presents uh, this result. Um, IBP provides uh, recommendations uh, with a certain degree of confidence uh, coming out of the machine learning model to correct that master data attributes according to the patterns that it has identified. And it even tells us what are those patterns to make sure that indeed there are relations between them. So this type of analysis uh, can be done uh, with any type of master data that you can uh, be using in supply chain. In this case, we've uh, selected products, but we could be selecting uh, customers, uh, vendors, uh, transportation links, any type of master data that you can imagine. This is already, uh, as, uh, like this is it's already very useful but it might happen that your business has a particular need that SAP has not covered in standard. So there's also the possibility to develop your own scenario. So let's even go deeper and let's have a look at the next slide where we are introducing now the custom uh, AI solutions. And uh, in the first place, uh, I will continue with uh, a, a, an SAP um, case called Intelligent Lead Time Prediction using SAP DI. In this case, uh, now let's imagine that we are in a situation where we have um, the following challenge. Uh, our company, for example, faces difficulties in predicting lead times accurately as they are highly dynamic and they are subject to fluctuations. Um, you know that traditional planning methods will struggle to keep up with uh, changing those uh, lead times due to the nature of them. They are constantly uh, moving in, and even more in today's uh, reality. Uh, also, the planners will be overwhelmed sometimes with the manual maintenance of that master data. Uh, it will lead to inconsistencies and accuracies if they do not act on that master data on time. Uh, so this can affect long term the overall planning performance uh, and it hinders in the end the, the, the overall supply chain. Um, yeah, using correct parameters in the planning process uh, can also uh, result in re unreliable forecast, inefficient allocation of resources, uh, inventory stockouts, uh, you name it. So how does a machine learning model uh, can offer us, a, how, how can it offer a solution for us? For example, we could implement a machine learning algorithm to analyze the historical data and find patterns uh, to predict those lead times by training models 
uh, incorporating also external factors, uh, for example, seasonality or uh, forca weather forecast, uh, supplier performance. So let's have a look graphically at uh, what is the difference uh, between the current process compared to an intelligent uh, process. So here we see that in a current process, what people are planners are used to, uh, we would have to upload uh, our master data um, lita eh, in the system. We would perform our planning runs. We would notice that our planning runs are in the end deviating for those actuals, uh, but it would be probably too late. We would then have to go back to the system, correct those lead times, and rerun the, the heuristics, the optimizer, and cross our fingers that the lead times did not change in the meantime or some, something happened. In contrary to, in, in opposition to this, we have an intelligent process that SAP is proposing where we could uh, get data from actuals, so see how our suppliers have performed, see how our production lines have performed, get that data, train an, an intelligent, uh, artificial intelligence model, predict future lead times based on whatever factors, and use those lead times for planning. That for sure, uh, you will relate to, to this. Uh, you can imagine this will be much more efficient than, than in the current uh, static uh, process. Let's have a look at the next slide. Um, just to frame uh, this solution, here we are talking about SAP DI. So maybe you wondered what SAP DI is. SAP Data Intelligence is actually a sub account of what SAP calls SAP Business Platform, Business Technology Platform, SAP BTP. Uh, SAP BTP is what powers uh, SAP AI Core. So we are only focusing on this uh, small piece of the whole SAP AI puzzle in this case. Let's have a look at the next uh, slide. So when it comes to intelligent lead time prediction, uh, an example architecture of this would be, for example, you are connecting your ERP system with data intelligence via BTP, which I was referring to a minute ago, and writing back our data into IBP. You can imagine all sorts of architecture, but in this case, we, are, we have prepared for you this uh, scenario. So we are reading data from uh, S4. We are moving that data to BTP, where the intelligent uh, model, the machine learning model, will actually run and predict the lead times. And we are getting those lead times and feeding them into IBP so that IBP can plan using those more accurate lead times. In the next slide, uh, we see a small screenshot of what we call the machine learning scenario manager. So this allows you to maintain your pipelines of data. So you control how the data is extracted from your source system into BTP. You also control your AI model. So here you see also a chapter for notebooks. You can write your Python notebook if, if, uh, if, if you want. And you can also manipulate the data and send it to IBP in whichever uh, format you, you wish in those steps that are mentioned. In the next slide, you uh, again see an uh, even more in detail uh, image of how uh, DI looks like. In this case, it's a pipeline where you can see on the left, uh, the operator that is extracting from the SAP source via CDS view. You also see some operators that are Jupyter notebooks, so where you can, you can write your Python code uh, if you are uh, really techy. Um, you can also have Python operators to calculate your metrics, but in the end, this tool allows you for any type of flexible combination that you can imagine and apply your own uh, custom AI solution, as we were saying. Once uh, the machine learning model has predicted the, the lead times and everything is ready, the next uh, step is to send them to uh, um, IBP in this case. Yeah, indeed. So the, in the next slide, you see a small uh, video where we show an app in IBP, which is called uh, Planner Workspace. Planner Workspace for most of the uh, IBP uh, users nowadays is becoming the main tool of interaction with uh, IBP. Um, it allows planners to interact uh, in key figures, uh, change planning, visualize planning, um, even uh, display charts, uh, dashboards. But here you see how we uh, have integrated uh, yeah, um, these predicted lead times into IBP to use actually in, uh, in supply chain planning. 
So yeah, with this, uh, we, uh, we now move into another custom solution. So uh, Nicola, uh, I give the word to you. Yeah, thank you, Sava. So a case I want to highlight um, is actually built upon the case I, I talked about earlier about automation. Um, so again, uh, the challenges sometimes uh, creating documents, registration in SAP can be a bit cumbersome. Uh, and we talked about how uh, SAP worked on the automation of sales order creation with AI. And actually, uh, in, in combination with a, a partner, a Kronos partner, uh, we've actually developed a platform that goes a step beyond uh, sales order creation. Uh, and it's called Classif AI. Uh, it's actually a separate platform that allows uh, the creation or scanning of any document type. So not just sales orders, but Classify is a platform that actually can uh, automat automate the creation of uh, production orders, uh, sales orders, purchase orders, pretty much any object type uh, for which an API exists. Uh, because like I said, um, Classify is a platform onto itself and it then needs to interface, of course, to SAP. So. Uh, imagine that Classify could scan your Outlook agenda for uh, sales order creation. It would identify some fields, such as here, and you can see an email. And Classify would identify certain key fields for uh, purchase order creation. It then would end up in the Classify platform, where you can actually you know, consolidate or consult uh, those documents that it had uh, has created or, or scanned. And then through an API, you can actually uh, create that document in SAP. Yeah. So an API exists for sales or purchase orders, production orders. All those objects can then be created. And in that sense, this custom solution in the Kronos group kind of builds further upon what uh, uh, SAP already provided uh, as an embedded solution. Um, then one more thing, uh, one more teaser, so to speak, uh, about uh, a solution that's coming in 2024 and which currently already exists for uh, success factors, so uh, HR and SAP. Um, so in the HR world, and we have success factors of SAP, which is a very complete solution for um, HR. Um, but uh, as an employee, sometimes it can be difficult to retrieve certain data uh, in, in success factors. And you want to look up certain data about a certain employee. You want to create a new open position in your company. It can, it can be sometimes difficult to find the right way and, and how to, to do those things. So SAP actually came up with its own next generation chatbot, so to speak. And they call it Yule. Um, so this is not just uh, the chatbot you see on your banking app or your banking website that you know, poses you some really random and um, you know, limited questions. Uh, Eula actually goes a bit beyond that. Uh, so it also can point you out where to find certain uh, information as a you know, generic chatbot, but it can also generate and create uh, certain objects. Uh, for example, if you say, I want to create a new position in my company for a sales manager, you can ask you to, to actually create that open position and publish it on, uh, to publish on your website. So it doesn't only answer questions, it also generates content for you. Um, so this solution currently already exists in success factors, but will be rolled out to S4HANA in 2024 as well. So um, again, if you have s hana and you're, you're writing on the updates that are coming, uh, this solution will be available in the future. So this chatbot will be embedded uh, and it will help you not only find or retrieve information, but it will also generate uh, data for you. So if you, for example, want to know uh, the sales figures of the three past months, you can actually ask Yula to create a report for you in a graph or whatever kind of report or query you want. Uh, so this will definitely uh, be a game changer in, in retrieving and creating reports in s So we're really looking forward to, to, to seeing this one in, uh, in 2024 in s And I'll give the word back to Erik. Yeah, thank you very much. Looks very interesting. So we're already at the end, in fact. Uh, let's uh, look at some conclusions that we can take of what we have seen today. Uh, so we've looked to AI inside digital supply chain solutions from SAP. And we have seen that there are embedded solutions, 
but there are also custom built solutions possible. Um, those custom built solutions are either can be done, uh, as you see also, also on the screen, together with a, co a Kronos company like Classify, uh, which they, where they have specific solutions uh, built, uh, which can then be integrated with SAP, with SAP platform. Um, or we go via, as Salva explained, other uh, AI providers like Azure, Google, or Amazon. Um, if you look to what we have seen, or if you would summarize what we have seen today, of course, it's, it's really a tip of the iceberg. Eh? The, the, the number of use cases that we have in SAP, also in standard, by the way, is of course much more than what we have seen today. Eh? It just, just give you a flavor of what is, what is possible. But in general, what those AI solutions do, whether they are custom or whether they are, um, whether they are embedded, they allow us or enable us as humans eh, to get a higher productivity. Eh? Um, it doesn't take that much time to process a sales order anymore if you use AI than if you don't. Eh? Uh, the same with the automatic document processing. Eh? It, it just allows us to work, uh, to work faster. Uh, also to focus on uh, value added work. So you, you could see the AI as a kind of an extension, of the things we, we don't like to do. Eh? A human doesn't like repetitive tasks. A human cannot process very large amounts of data. Yeah. We've seen the example of the, of the, um, uh, the lead time prediction, uh, where basically if somebody needs to go and find why a lead time is not correct, he would have to dive into the data, but that will take a lot of time and he cannot really focus on his work, be, like being a planner. No, he needs to go and analyze, analyze data. And, and, and the thing is that, that a human can only, yeah, absorb a certain amount of data in a certain amount of time. This is also where AI can do it much better. Um, it will allow us to also make use of more accurate data. We have seen the example of the anomaly detection. Again, it's a bit in relation to the previous one. The AI can help you in detecting these anomalies. Huh? Um, and it's not a human that needs to go and try to find anomalies in the in the master data. And I think we all recognize this uh, this kind of use case in in our companies. And finally, also new insights. Eh? It's not only the automation part or the the fact that it can gather that it can process large amounts of data. If you look to clustering algorithms inside artificial intelligence, they can really give you insights in data which you were not aware. Eh? It can gives you give you a kind of proposal of a classification based on, on metrics that you were not aware. So it can give you also um, an additional view on your business to potentially do um, a specific uh, targeted marketing or, or, or approach a certain segment in a certain way from an inventory perspective. The key takeaways from today, I think, are that although we've seen the hype cycle and a lot of AI-related solutions are still climbing up the, 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 hype, the hype cycle. Um, it seems that AI is something which is here to stay. Uh, it is something which will change the way that we work. Um, at the first instance, it will not replace necessarily uh, the work of the, of, of, of the people, or the, of, of, let's say, of planners or of people that are in order taking, as we have seen, for example. But it will allow them to work faster more accurate and also with a broader span of control. The system can just handle more data than you can do as a human. Um, as we have seen, SAP offers already many use cases in standard. We have just, as I said, we have shown two in fact, eh? one in S4, one in IDP. But if you want, we can share you the, the, full, the full list. It's really uh, a large, uh, a long list not only in digital supply chain, because today we are focused on digital supply chain, what we call a design to operate process. But in fact, these, these AI solutions uh, are available in other, um, uh, in other process as well, um, like the hire to retire process, where at the moment, uh, Nicolas talked about EULA, it's available in success factors. Um, but so the other, there are AI solutions available in other uh, processes as well. Next to that, we have the custom AI solutions. Huh? 
the point of a custom AI solution is, of course, you need to define very well what is your business case, what is the, what is the issue that you're trying to solve. Huh? At the moment, and we're talking about, let's say, um, solutions that are focusing on a specific problem. Huh? And we learn, we, we train uh, algorithms to handle a specific problem. That's what we have seen with the lead time prediction. That's what we have seen with classify with the document recognition. Yeah? So a specific case for which we can then build custom um, solutions via the, the BTP platform. And last but not least, implementing AI is not something you do, um, let's say, very, very quickly on the, on, on the fly, let's say. Yeah? It's, it's, it's like a journey, but you need to start somewhere. Yeah? And we think as it is really enabling people um, to, to be more productive and to work faster, we think starting with standard available content is the most logical step to do. You don't immediately need to start building your own custom, custom uh, or using custom algorithms uh, like the intelligent lead time prediction necessarily, although it's, it's, I do think it's an interesting case, but you can really start with um, deploying the standard available content. If we look to, for example, the, the, the machine learning that is applied on the, on the master data eh, to, to find the anomalies in the master data, that is really, it's one click away. Let's say, of course, you need to define some rules and you need to let it train or, or, or find, find some rules, but you don't need to build anything additional um, in order to enable this uh, solution. So on that, I think, we can wrap it up for uh, for today and we can have a look at some questions that might have popped up during uh, the call. The first question um, is whether the PDF file that is being uploaded, I think this is in relation to the sales order processing, um, does it need to have a specific format or it can be any format? Uh, yeah, uh, so I'll answer that one. Um, indeed, it, it doesn't have to have a specific format. So um, it can be in any form of unstructured data, uh, be it Excel or PDF. And it just looks for certain fields uh, that it recognizes as important to create the sales order. But the PDF doesn't have to have a specific format. Uh, I have to say, I never tested the limits of how unstructured you can make it. But um, a basic PO uh, output on a PDF format basically should work. And, and it doesn't really matter where your fields are, are in that format. So. But I haven't tested the limits, but basically it should be any, any form it should work. Okay, then let's have a look at the next question. To which degree is the automated, automated sales order processing a plug and play solution? Yeah, so I'll also take that question. Um, so in essence, it's a best practice. Uh, so uh, if you update your s hana system from time to time, that app will be available to you. And in essence, it should be plug and play. Um, however, we've briefly tested it ourselves, and we have to say it's not entirely plug and play. Yeah? So there are a few prerequisites you have to install. Uh, there's an intelligence scenario that you have to install, so, uh, some interaction with PPP. So there's a few steps you have to go through to actually be able to use that app. Uh, but as, in essence, those steps are minimal, and uh, again, it should be plug and play. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> the next question is, um, is IBP an add-on or is it present in any S4 installation? Um, well, maybe I can, I can take that, uh, that question. So um, IBP as such is indeed a standalone cloud, cloud solution, uh, which can integrate with S4 or for that matter with any other, uh, with other backend, uh, backend system, but indeed it's a separate, uh, separate cloud solution specifically dedicated on um, planning more midterm, let's say tactical midterm planning. Um, inside S4, there are also planning capabilities. Uh, 
um, but they, those are more closer to, let's say, execution and things like um, production planning and detailed scheduling um, or warehouse management. Those are inside extended warehouse management are inside uh, S4. IVP is really the tool to um, perform, let's say, the real um, planning processes like demand planning, supply network planning. Um, and so, as I said, it's a separate, it's a separate uh, cloud solution indeed. The next question is, how many data points does one need for training uh, lead time prediction? I think, yeah. Salva, yeah, that's maybe a difficult question. Yeah, well, indeed, um, at least uh, the model that we have trained and we have seen uses um, good receipt and good issue times, the actuals from uh, purchasing documents. But you can make it even more complex by incorporating other factors, um, um, yeah, weather conditions, uh, traffic situation, and in terms of how long uh, back in the in the in the past we need to go. Well, it also depends uh, again on on what type of data we are facing. If we are looking at cyclic data or there's some kind of seasonality, maybe in um, in winter the lead times are different than in summer because in summer there are some road bans due to uh, high uh, um, uh, yeah, tourist uh, traffic, well, then we probably need a couple of years back of data. So collecting the data is, is, is also very important. How much data we need? Well, it depends on, on the type of data we are, we are looking at. Hard to, hard to tell, but yeah, certainly normally if you connect to an S4 system, we should already have quite a a decent amount of data when it comes to actuals. Yeah, I think also what is important there in, in training and uh, any any model, in fact, it's not only the, the quantity of data, and it's, it's also the quality of the data that, 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 that is important. Eh? So um, if you give it um, if you if you give it um, data which is which is biased, for example then of course it can also come up with biased proposals and um, and so it's very important to think about or or to pay attention to that first step of collecting the data what are you collecting is the set complete enough <clears throat> on the one hand and is the quality that we give to it um yeah from a sufficient high high, high level so next to the to the quantity the many data points is also the quality um that that will play a role And then the next question, um, are there specific, uh, is, is there a specific reason why SAP Open Text Solution was not a choice for the recognition and document creation solution? Um, that I think is a good question. Um, that's something we would have to yeah. check and maybe come back on later on, I think. Then another one is, as the importance of AI will keep evolving over time, what will be the role of the planners still be in this, uh, in this process? Uh, well, yeah, as we, as we described, uh, as a in a first step, we need to see the AI solution as a kind of an, an extension of the, of the planner. Eh? It, it helps him in, in, um, in being more, let's say, productive and focusing on the, on the value, added, uh, value added tasks. Um, however, it can, of course, go a step further and indeed uh, it, it can make also proposal or make certain decisions. And the role of the planner in that case, in the first instance, will be more somebody who needs to can, can validate um, the, the decisions or the proposals that the system, uh, the system has done. And the idea of the, the, the AI at the moment that we would really bring it into decision making is, yeah, Again, it's a bit linked with, 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 with classification. I like like um, maybe 85% of, uh, of the decisions that need to be made, they are, um, let's say, relative, they, they don't need, they have a high degree of confidence, let's say, and they don't need an input from a planner anymore. So you can automate these kind of decisions. Um, However, if we are in cases where the, um, 
uh, where the confidence is not that high. Hey, we have seen it with a bit, a bit uh, with the uh, um, with the master data anomalies. Like you could say, okay, the ones that you are confident of more than ninety five percent or ninety eight percent for that matter, yeah, do those changes. A, sim a similar a similar <clears throat> solution exists, for example, um, for um, for safety stock determination. Yeah? You can have, you can do a calculation based on um, data that you have available um, and, and factors that, that need to be taken into account. As soon as that, that, that confidence is more than a certain percent, you can automate it, meaning that the planner doesn't need to spend time on it anymore. However, he, and that's the thing that he does need to spend time on today because it's dependent on his, his, his job. With the AI solution, he will be able to focus on the ones where the system is not so confident and where human, um, let's say, assessment or judgment would still be uh, would, would still be required. So we talk already a long time about management by exception, but I, but I think what we have seen in the past with alerting uh, that we had in plan in planning systems it, that there were always like too many alerts or, or not enough alerts or it was always a bit uh, a struggle. Um, the AI will probably enable us really more to go into that management by exception, and of course then you would need to trust the system in the decisions that he is making or that he is proposing. But that is, of course, a learning process also from an organizational point of view to start trusting what the AI is doing. So that's part, let's, I would say, part of a, of a project of, of an implementation. OK, I think that was the last question that we uh, can, can handle in the time that we, uh, that we have available. Um, yeah, the presentation will be shared uh, afterwards. Um, if you still have questions, then please do not hesitate to uh, call out and contact us. We will be glad to help out. Thank you very much for joining and hope to see you in our next webinar in December. Bye. Bye-bye.